When you think of Triumph motorcycles, what do you normally think of? Well, for me, I think of screaming triple cylinders, that intake cowl, and a really aggressive, sporty bike. Or maybe you think of the Bonneville range with their torque-rich engines, that delicious 270-degree parallel twin. But if you wanted to start on a Triumph, you've never really had a great option. Sure, you could start on a Bonneville or something like that, or if you really were crazy, you could start on a street triple. But in 2021, Triumph released this, the Triumph Trident 660. This is Triumph's answer to the beginner bike category. Today, we're gonna find out if it's a good beginner bike or if it's best reserved for someone a little further down their motorcycling journey. Let's find out. Triumph had one objective when it came to the Trident. It wanted to dethrone the king of the class, the MT-07. If you don't believe me, Triumph actually said so in their press releases that that was their benchmark motorcycle. Now, when you're coming for the crown of a bike like the MT-07, you better come correct. There's three things you gotta think about when you're coming for that type of motorcycle. Number one, you gotta have enough power so this thing is fun. You gotta make it so that veteran riders can enjoy it and the beginner riders can keep it around for a long time and have fun with it. Number two, you gotta make sure the price is right. The MT-07 is priced really aggressively. You gotta make a motorcycle that comes in well below 10,000 bucks to get people interested in it. And number three, it's gotta be fun. We all know the MT-07 is a super fun motorcycle and these middleweight nakeds are a ton of fun to ride. So let's see if this bike lives up to the promise of number one and let's take a look at the specs. So this Trident here features a new engine for Triumph, a 660cc inline triple. Now I know what you're thinking, inline triple about 675 cc's isn't that just the daytona engine but a little bit smaller well yes and no so this motorcycle's engine is actually completely different in the way that it makes its power it's only making 80 horsepower and 40 foot compared to the crazy top end that the day there are people out there who are claiming that this motor few changes here and there can be just as powerful as a street triple or a Daytona, and they don't know what they're talking about, guys. But the question is, how does that feel when you get it out on the road? So out on the road, this 80 horsepower engine, you actually do feel like you're getting that 80 horsepower from it. It feels about as fast as an MT-07 does, which again, that being the gold standard and the goal for this motorcycle, is a good thing to say. However, I gotta mention the fact that this throttle feels a little funny. It's very soft and very muted when you first roll on. It feels artificially slowed down to make this engine, which inline triples are known for being really juicy in the low end, having a lot of torque on tap. It feels like they compensated for that by having a artificially muted throttle. If I'm rolling down the road in neutral, just watch how it just kind of holds RPMs as I rev the throttle out like that. It's, it's really weird. It, it feels very computerized. Now, that goes away when you get it in the top half of the RPM band, but again, it doesn't feel like that normal screaming inline triple. You don't get that induction howl out of this motorcycle. It feels very much like a uh, street triple light to me. One last thing I wanted to talk about with this motorcycle while we're focusing on the engine is the 600 mile break-in myth. On this motorcycle, I have seen a ton of comments, and I mean a ton of people, down in the comment section below, who are saying that after 600 miles, after you get the service done, it's suddenly a completely different bike. Now look guys, I know what 80 horsepower feels like, and this thing feels just about as fast as an MT-07. Maybe when you get the service done, you get a little bit of a different throttle feel. It's a little less herky-jerky on-off but it's not going to be substantially faster than it is right now. So if you're one of those people who's out there expecting to suffer through 600 miles of a sort of muted throttle for it to completely change into a different bike once you get the service done, you might find yourself a little bit disappointed. Now, while the specs on this Triumph Trident might be a bit of a mixed bag, one thing is for sure, this bike handles beautifully, and that's down to the fact that it's got these Showa front forks that are non-adjustable and a preload adjustable shock at the rear. That makes this motorcycle feel great from side to side and is pretty clear in our opinion as well. Combined with the fact that this motorcycle only weighs 417 pounds, it feels really good from side to side. Let me show you what I mean. So getting the Triumph Trident here in some of these twistier sections, the first thing you notice is, oh, it's so compliant. That suspension works so well to keep everything dialed in. You don't feel any crazy bumps or any craziness out of the front end of this bike. 
it's super stable and dialed in and these Michelin Pilot Road 5s do a really great job at handling the road as well. Um, I think these tires have a ton of appropriate grip for this machine and uh, it just feels really really good when you're on the side. Is it as effervescent and fun as an MT-07? Mm, not exactly, but it definitely is a lot more confidence inspiring to flick it through a nice set of corners. One of the most important things when you're considering buying a motorcycle is how it actually fits you as a rider. We call that the ergonomics package of a machine. So for me, I'm about 5 foot 11. I've got a 32 inch inseam, about 165 pounds. When I swing a leg over the Triumph Trident, this is about as neutral of a riding position as you're going to find on any motorcycle on sale nowadays. The reach of the bars is nice and comfortable. I've got a very nice and amenable bend in my leg are reasonably low enough to where you can literally cruise on this thing all day long. But how does it fit a larger rider? I'm mounting up on the Triumph here at six foot four in my boots with a 33 to 34 inch inseam and 240 pounds. I can say that I am pushing the limits on this motorcycle. Mounting up here, when I sit, my, my top half completely comfortable. The reach of the bars, super easy, super amenable. The seat's in a nice spot, it's comfortable, but my lower half does feel cramped on this bike. My knee hits this cutout right here on the gas tank, and if I put my toes up on the peg, my heel starts hitting the passenger peg here, which is a bit of a bummer. It would be nice if it was just a bit bigger, but I have that problem with a lot of different motorcycles. So a bike that's aimed at beginners, it makes sense that it's a little small for a guy my size. Now, one thing that this motorcycle does have over the competition is some cool technology in here. So let's take a minute and discuss what this bike actually has on board to keep you safe while you're riding it. Now, normally in the 650-ish class, the only technology you get on your bike is your dashboard, your throttle, and ABS. But on this motorcycle, you actually have the inclusion of a rain mode, as well as a TFT and LCD dash combo on this motorcycle. It is nice to have just a little bit of adjustability going on here. Makes it feel a little bit more premium, though it is worth pointing out that on a motorcycle that's only making 80 horsepower, you don't really need these two ride modes. Just a little bit of throttle control does a lot of work for you. Two things that are worth noting, you can get a quick shifter on this motorcycle as an option, and if you roll the throttle forward, you feel what feels like a cruise control kill switch. This bike does not have cruise control, but it feels like it might be an optional extra later on down the line. So that is worth noting on this bike. Again, is it going to change the whole marketplace? Meh, probably not, but it's a neat feature to have. Now let's get this motorcycle back in the shop and wrap our thoughts up on this bike. All right, folks, wrapping the day up here with the Triumph Trident, our comprehensive review. We're trying to figure out who this bike is actually for. Now, there's a lot of categories of who it might be for, right? But we've got beginners might be getting this bike, returning riders, intermediate riders, maybe someone looking for a bop around city bike. So kind of fits the bill for a lot of people, right? Yeah, I mean, it's weird to have a motorcycle that is so marketed to everybody, yeah. really. Um, Triumph really wants a beginner to hop on it, which is why they tuned it basically to be an MT-07. And they dropped the price so that younger riders could get on it. But they also have enough power on tap that theoretically a vet would want it. Mm -hmm. But in my experience riding this thing around, I think the bike is best suited for somebody who lives in like a dense urban environment, say somebody like in downtown Chicago or New York, San Francisco, who wants to ride their motorcycle into the office, not have to pay for a car, mm. and then occasionally gets out on a twisty road. Yeah. You know, I don't I wouldn't use this personally as my weekend weapon. Yeah. I would really use it as a commuter. I think that's where it shines. Yeah, I would agree, Spud. I think it's a very utilitarian motorcycle. It's not something that inspires a ton of excitement and pizzazz, but if you need a bike that you want to use day in and day out, this thing makes a great case for itself. In terms of the beginner rider, we've talked about how this motorcycle is probably best suited for someone past that 23, 24 year age mark. This thing does have a good amount of power that would probably scare someone in the younger category. We like looking at the A1, A2 kind of framing here on Yami Noob for what constitutes a beginner bike. So yeah, if you're coming at motorcycle, Cycles, maybe you're a little bit older, 24, 25 years old, this thing would be pretty perfect. But for you guys in that 18 to 19 year old category, maybe skip something with this much power. It is pretty potent, despite it not being a street triple, even though everyone says that after 600 miles, it somehow has 
150 horsepower, apparently. Yeah, guys, that's just not true. That's not true at all. Uh, it's it, The break-in thing is perhaps maybe they tune the throttle just a little bit, maybe. Yeah. You're not going to get 40 extra horsepower. But no, thing. it's not going to be a whole new ride. Yeah, no, it's said just earlier. So uh, I, I just think it's, for me, this is a nice, like, Lexus sedan. Yes. Of motorcycling right here. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. It's kind of posh, kind of well built, you know, you know mm -hmm. exactly what you're going to get. Everything's smooth, it's nice, it's refined, it's controlled. But in my opinion, that's not why you get a motorcycle, right? Exactly. And that's what we came back to in our MT-07 versus Trident review. It's what we keep coming back to with this bike. Um, you know, little little behind the curtains look here. We actually forgot we had this bike in the shop for a couple of days. Um, it just doesn't really inspire a whole bunch of excitement. But uh, if it's your first motorcycle, it's very handsome. It's yeah. you know, it's good looking. It's a fun, exciting thing. You're gonna really enjoy it. But for those of you who are more experienced motorcyclists, there are more fun, interesting options out there. And that is one of the dings against the Trident that that we both think, right? It's a, it's a little, it's a little milk toast. Yeah. But again, like you said, for the beginner that you don't know any better, this thing is really sweet. It's a really sweet bike. It looks great. I love this accent right here on the gas tank, the big Triumph logo, the very simple, solid round headlight here, you know, nothing crazy, no street triple bug eye look that polarizes everybody. It's a handsome, good motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, one of 10, I would probably rate it like an eight and a half. It's a great bike. See, I'm gonna rate it a little bit lower just because, you know, I have to look at it from my own lens. Right, I'm a Triumph simp, so I have yeah. to I have to braid it up. So for me, it's it's like a seven, maybe a six and a half, just because it doesn't really Ooh, inspire. Six and a half. It's, it's fine. We're it's, stumbling into Jixxer 250 territory No, the there. Jixxer 250 is like a negative 10. <laughs> you you ride that as a punishment. <laughs> I, have, I have punished you by making you ride it before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not this is not no, a no, punishment it's, no, to it's ride. It's, it's it's great. It's fun, it's fine. Uh it's fine. But I think the big thing about it, you know, going back to the thing where we forgot it was in the shop, um do you ever reach for the keys for this thing? Out of all the bikes we have here, I, I never find myself being like, "Oh, let me jump on the Trident." No. That's why I give it a lower score. Yeah, that's fair. With all that being said, we hope you guys have enjoyed this review on the Triumph Trident. Remember, this is one of our giveaway motorcycles. Hit the links down below. Find out how you can enter to win this thing. Time is running out. And this is a really great motorcycle. I want you guys to know that just because we have a couple things and a couple qualms about it doesn't mean it's not fantastic. It handles better than MT-07, oh, makes wait. great power, is a really great price point. I think Triumph really knocked it out of the park, and they're going to sell a lot of these motorcycles. So, yeah, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hey, great seeing you here. Didn't think I'd see you back at the end of another Yami Noob video. Yes, this video is actually over, but if you hit this link over here, you can keep watching Yami Noob. Leave me a comment on this one and that one if you don't mind. Let me know if you liked it or hated it, and then uh, maybe we can make the videos better. Keep improving, right?